Greg, thank you very much for catching up with me today. Really looking forward to hearing more about um, Clean as a Business, but also your experience since you joined last year, um, the first sales hire of the business, which is obviously an amazing opportunity. Um, I think it would be great to hear from your experience from joining last year um, and the plans of growth, which is obviously super exciting this year. What makes Clean such an amazing place to work? Yeah, good question, Ash. Um, I mean, I'd like to probably distill it down to three key things. Um, the first is that we are trying to build a really um, exciting high performance culture. And I think that's massively important to us as individuals within the business. And, and if you can get that to be something that everybody buys into as they join, that um, becomes increasingly powerful with um, making people successful when they enter the, enter the business. Um, on top of that is the fact that actually the, the culture between the people involved is excellent, like lots of kind of socializing, everybody gets on. It's a really um, open group of people who um, really care for each other, but also care for the business. And you don't get that in every business. It's, it's kind of, it's more common in startup land, but it's, it's not there in every business. And it's been fantastic to see that everybody we've hired has really bought into everybody else in the team. Um, and the third is that although data is uh, um, can, like could be perceived as quite like a complex space, it's actually a very exciting space, like what people can do with data and the scope of a data SaaS business for growth, end game, and, and kind of that real, um, like where those businesses end up as like unicorns, most of them, if you, if you get it right, is obviously exciting as well from a from a purely kind of growth and, and commercial perspective. Yeah, nice. It's interesting. I think speaking about data and making it sound more exciting is great. And obviously what you, what you and the team are doing um, is really exciting. I think what's interesting is that since you've joined, um, I know you've grown the team and that you've got some really exciting plans to grow the team again yeah. this year. I know you've already spoken about that great culture you have. I mean, how are you planning on maintaining that and keeping a great, a great work, a work ethos throughout, throughout that growth? Yeah, it's it's um it's a it's a tough it's a tough challenge, and and that's one of the things that as a as a kind of lead with any business you you're tasked with. I think for us, it's it starts at the it starts from minute one. The the minute we meet a candidate, we are helping them. Hopefully, we're hoping we're we're trying to coach them and make them better through the entire process. And I think that's really important because if you find people who like that process of being developed and being coached through the interview process, the learning journey that you get taken on when you're interviewing with us, that can be extremely powerful in making sure that that does persist and continue when you hire more and more people. Um, the, the next thing that we're doing is like a, a genuine focus on care for employees. And um, we bring a lot of younger people into the business. A lot of people are in their first, second, maybe their third tops jobs. Um, and people who are coming in at that age and that level, they have an expectation quite rightly that the business will develop them and will take it, take them under its wing and, and continue to make them successful. So on an individual leadership level, we are massively encouraging of um, like a lot of one-to-one -one time with every employee that comes in, not just of fob you off to a middle manager or whatever it might be. We're barely even big enough to have those middle managers. So there's a lot of there's a lot of face time with with the people in the executive team, with the management team, and people who've hopefully got a little bit more transferable experience. So those junior people can come in and not just be prepared for the job they're in right now but be prepared for that job and that career that they dream of ahead of them. And, and that's really why, why we try and maintain that level um, as, as we add more heads. Yeah, I think it's interesting how you spoke about the um, hiring people and, and focusing on what their, what their career pathway is going to be in the future. I think a, an area which we all know is, is, is massive for, for any level of candidate uh, moving into a business is what does learning and development look like? How they're going to progress? Um, I mean, what does L and D look like at Clean, and, and what processes have you got in place at the moment? Yeah, I mean, we're we're still fairly early stage, so it's um, it's a, a, 
evolution really with with the way that we're taking the l and d but the the primary factor is is that weekly one to ones from executive down to the most junior members of the team like that that in itself um adds an incredible amount of value i mean our, our founders used to be the chief data officer at like trainline.com. They were the first um, analytics hires at Just Eat. They really know data and they really know the SaaS industry. So working one-to-one with people in the leadership team is, is an extremely um, important part of that. Um, in a lot of areas of the business, so like sales, marketing, customer success, we work directly with Sales Impact Academy, who um, are the like live online learning platform for commercial people. And we see a lot of value in um, driving that kind of culture where people have that as a resource that they can um, use as and when they want to. Obviously, they're encouraged to pick up certain courses at certain times, but the rest of the time, um, they're, they're encouraged to, to sign up of their own accord and, and spend their own time learning. But I think the biggest thing that I see an awful lot of is that we have tried our best to work with the earliest hires we made to just make them like super coaches. And like even though they started off as junior members of the team to evolve in their roles. So they've all moved on to kind of like head of customer success roles, head of SDR roles, AE roles now. But on the premise and the principle that their job doesn't end there and it's to, it's to work with their colleagues, work with the people that are coming into the business to make them better and make everybody in the business high performing and excellent, not just be like, oh, well, I'm done with that role, see you later kind of thing. Again, it's, it's invest in each other, invest time in each other to, to make each other better. And I think that's the, that's the core of what's made a lot of our team members develop so fast. Yeah, I think it's interesting when you talk about the super coaches and that um, you've got such an, a high level of experience with, with candidates, uh, with, with people within the business from a data background. Um, I guess data is not niche, but potentially is maybe not as well known as other areas within SaaS. I mean, for those people who potentially are come, who haven't got a data background, should they still even consider applying? I mean, what's the training into getting them up to speed? If oh, like... In? 100 percent like i knew nothing about data 10 months ago 11 months ago and i came in like as long as you've got a willingness to learn you should be trying to get into whatever sector you think is coolest has the most like long-term potential whatever it is and what i've realized since getting into data as somebody who's not like mathematical in any way like it's definitely my weakest suit is the the math side thing but like actually learning to do data properly sets you up unbelievably well for your whole career actually like every job role you'll ever want to go into from day one will just have a higher and higher data requirement so to be in a business which is so like data first mindset and to be learning from people who are like professional data people has just been absolutely eye-opening for me, even coming in at a leadership level. And it's, it's definitely taken my kind of personal game onto a, a, another um, an, another kind of echelon. And, and I think that will happen for everybody because the business is data-first mindseted, which is not the case with most businesses still these days. So yeah, if you, if you like data is cool, it doesn't seem it from the outside. It seems a bit complex and scary, but it's actually really cool, really interesting. And, and when you learn to do it properly, it will elevate you above what most other areas of SaaS could do. Amazing. I mean, I, th- I think it's I think it's great to have that coming from you. That people listening in today are, are potentially going to have more confidence thinking about it. I think an interesting piece coming on to it. And I want to talk specifically about your sales team and then about Clean as a, as company wide. I know it's been a really difficult um, year. I think um, it's 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 basically been over a year now that we've been in lockdown i mean i think out of all out of all functions i'm from a sales background myself it is so difficult to maintain that motivation and and structure um while you're working from home how have you done that but also um have you got any tips for other sales leaders um for how to maintain um motivation but also success within their team yeah absolutely 
I think, I think it, it's hard and I, I have a bit of a, I have a fear in my gut that SDRs, especially the most junior members of our teams are going to um, have a slightly different experience than what we got when we started. So we've just been working tiles, tirelessly to ensure that that isn't the case. And I think the thing that's being missed with work from home is um, the kind of ad hoc opportunity for learning during a day or bouncing off a colleague or kind of passively hearing something in the background and being like oh I could use that myself and what 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 we've tried to do is create those moments so we've um we reconnect at the start of most days we reconnect at the end of most days we discuss successes and failures at the end of each day so what worked what didn't how can we do it better next time how can we learn from each other um the guys in the um, the guys and girls in the sales team have been um spending a lot of time on like Zoom calls to each other, trying to trying to call at the same time and, and not really for like a cliche way so that like their support for each other is such, but just so that they've got those coaching opportunities and those learning opportunities through um through the work from home environment. And like I'll be honest, like when we when the pandemic is is over, like I have no doubt that we will go back to being an office-based team, not for the reason that most people used to work in offices, which is that people um, like were micromanagers, none of that. It's all about creating those daily learning opportunities that actually junior members of the team, when they're in their first and second jobs, they need those moments to be successful and develop. So we absolutely want to be creating as many of those as possible. And the best way to do that is to have an office environment where you can overhear and you can almost learn by osmosis by just being in the space and, and learning that. So I think that's something that junior people should be really conscious of. Work from home sounds like the best thing in the world. Actually, it's quite a lonely place at times and you are going to sacrifice learning opportunities if you're, if you're not in and around your colleagues, especially early on in your career. So um, definitely one for consideration, I think, if people are, are listening in. Yeah, definitely. I think it's an interesting one because I think usually people, when they look around the team you're joining, they add up the amount of years and actually the years of experience you have is is actually amazing when you're walking into that. I think it's really cool how you do the start and the end of the day, but also the team catch up separately as well. What we've been doing is as a team, we've been listening in on each other's calls, whether it's yep. our cold calls or um, demonstrations to really kind of unpick and see where the areas are going. and even as someone's a junior in the team, they're still bringing great and fresh ideas. And I think you're right, that camaraderie is definitely missed. And I can't wait to get back into the office, to be honest. So uh, it's going to be good. And I think it's always interesting to know as a business um, what, what, what the leaders have done to kind of maintain motivation throughout the whole team. Um, because I think people listening in are going to kind of want to understand how employees have been treated um, obviously during the pandemic as well as, a, as, a, as, a, as an important area? Yeah, I mean, so from a from a sales perspective, we're obviously quite incentives led. Like it's, um, we've been using gamification, we've been using prize giving, all those kind of things. But just more generally on the team, like we, we connect as a whole business on a regular basis. Um, we have been growing super fast over the last 12 months. So actually like there's just been a necessity to, to deliver work and to to kind of put the put almost double the effort in just to maintain the levels of growth as you'd expect in a kind of good growing SaaS company. Um, but from the leadership perspective, again, it's been um, I suppose like one of the one example is like diary value or, or calendar calendar value. <laughs> Working from home, you love it. Working from home. Um, should we start that question again? No, just, just, just carry on. It's fine. Um, yeah, one of the things that has been really important is the like the the diary value in essence, um, which is like if a one to one's in the diary, it's not a removable object. It's as important as something that would be held externally. Because if we're not in this like even more distant world, showing a like an increased level of value within our employee time and our time with the people that like are in our teams, then we're just doing it wrong. So that, that's probably been the most notable thing, making sure that internal doesn't get sacrificed for external just because it's not going to lead to revenue when actually it's prioritizing 
energy and prioritizing training and coaching and that type of thing. So that's probably been the most notable, notable thing. Yeah, I think that's cool that that's, uh, that's people first. I think that's people first, yeah. big businesses sometimes forget about that, but mm-hmm. people are the most important areas in your business. And given that you're growing and you're getting, and you're going to be creating all of these um, amazing coaches that you're going to need that and you want that to run through the business. So it's really great to, to hear that that's what's happening in the team. Um, you've mentioned a few times uh, you're growing the team. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting to potentially understand from a sales perspective, but also from a wider team perspective, to so know that you're recruiting in other areas of the business as well. Um, what are the key areas that you're looking for um, when people are applying and have you got any tips for anyone who's specifically applying to clean? Yeah, I mean, I'd say just a general rule, and this is this is probably going to invite so much inbound for me. Like the best way to get a job in what is a very, very noisy environment is to contact the hiring manager directly, even if it's just to say, hey, or just to, as if you were like, from a sales perspective in particular, as if you were prospecting the person. Like I had, um, I had a, I spoke to a guy yesterday who came through one of our recruitment partners um, and he just connected with me on LinkedIn and he wasn't like, it wasn't anything pushy or persuasive, but it was just, oh, oh like I noticed you into American football. Like I, I, I was as well when I was at uni, like not like tell me how to get a job with you, but just enough to put him on my radar. And I think that can be a really powerful thing. Um, in terms of a way of getting a job at clean, like I'll be completely honest when we're hiring in sales, we're, we're looking to optimize for height of ceiling, but also minimize risk. So anything you can do to get some cold call and experience, because we're a very phone, we're a phone first mindset. We believe most of our meetings are booked on the phone because of the types of personas we, we contact. Um, so getting good at that and showing that you've got the confidence and the ambition to do that daily and do it regularly is going to be really helpful. Um, but yeah, more than anything, just, just make sure, Find a way to raise your raise your head above the parapet, I think, is the big thing. Um, and it's very difficult to do that on CVs alone. So um, find a way to raise your head above the parapet. Perfect. If only there was a platform where you could have a video introduction. If only there was a way you could do that, right? Uh, in case you know, no one doesn't know, that is Tempo, by the way. We have got that on your profile. So um, you can go about it that way. I think now, um, just my last question, um, because... I know that we've spoken about a lot of things already today um, and you got your job during a difficult period of time last year at Clean um, and things are starting to pick up a little bit more now. I think 50% of employees are looking to, over 50% are looking to hire this year. I mean, what advice have you got for those who are, who are, on, who are in the job market today, whether it's for sales or, or any role within the business? I mean, what are your best bits of advice for those who are looking to, to find work now? actually choose jobs and companies that matter to you and for whatever reason that might be it might be that you want to get into the SaaS industry so don't just hopelessly click apply on 100 jobs on tempo or on linkedin like go about it as if you were doing a prospecting job like as if you were going out there from a sales perspective or even it doesn't matter whether it's a sales job or not treat it like it's a sales process because ultimately you're selling yourself to a buyer like go out there target companies target hiring managers in a fairly personalized way so that when they do contact you they, you understand what the message should be in return. So last thing you want is to pick up a cold call from a hiring manager and be like, oh, we're looking to get an interview with you. And you're like, oh, I don't really know. I, like, I've applied for a hundred jobs. I don't know which one this is kind of thing. That's yeah. terrible. Like really focus on the reasons that you are applying within the job description, within on tempo, the company videos or the job role videos that go with it. Like why does, why is that job right for you? And why are you right for that job? We can dig into all the important stuff around your personality traits, your experience, all those things after, but ultimately why does that job matter to you? And why are you taking a personalized approach to that hiring process? You will be more successful focusing on, five to 10 key jobs than applying for 150 willy-nilly like that's that's all I can say like 
stuff like on tempo I, I do really like the video feature on tempo having a video up there caring enough to have a video of yourself it's going to be a difference maker i'm really unlikely to hire on tempo without a video because i just think if there was an opportunity to do that why haven't you if you get asked to do video questions do them, do them well and give yourself that platform to again, differentiate yourself. I think that's probably the biggest thing I'd say, like focus focus on the right jobs and invest enough time into each one to be successful. Yeah, definitely. Because I think not enough people do, do take that outlook when it, when it goes to applying to jobs. I think people just hit and hope and see what happens. But you're right, if you do actually take time to focus on business, personalize it, maybe 80% of the candidates you're up against haven't done that and maybe only 20% have. So focusing, I think, I think that's really amazing advice. Figure out five to 10 businesses that you really want to work for and care about. Spend a bit extra time and personalizing those as well. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, Greg, thank you very much for catching up with me today. It's been great to hear why Clean's a great place to work. It's, it seems like a very exciting place over the next few months for uh, and going into the second half of the year as well but also giving some insight into into those who are looking for for sales roles as well so thank you very much for catching up with me um really looking forward to seeing how you and the business are going to continue growing this year no thank you for having me mate really appreciate it amazing cheers greg